Aquarius, one more piece of advice turns this chapter of your life into an art piece. Except this chapter is a complete blank canvas. It's up to you to start creating the story you wish to live. Welcome to Uprise Astrology Podcast and today's episode. Today we are going to be focusing on two very important transits, in my opinion, that are going to really shape the month of January 2022. The first thing we're going to look at in today's episode is the powerful full moon in Cancer that it is going to be unfolding at 27 degrees. And then we will also take a look at the Venus retrograde that is coming to an end on January 29th. It is stationing at 11 degrees to start to go direct. And what does all of that mean? We're going to take a look at the chart. I'm also pulling a tarot reading at the very end to see what this month is going to bring to you. My intention is to cut through the noise and bring you the most important messages so that you are prepared. Let's dive into this reading and pull up the charts. All right, Aquarius, let's dive right into where the full moon in Cancer is going to be unfolding for you. It quite literally jumpstarts this week. Um, I feel like it is a a blessing in a way uh, this week that the full moon is jumpstarting us into right on Monday into the week. Um, It is going to be um, a quick but very much needed boost of energy. I would say that the themes of this full moon are around protection. They are also around being uh, really ingrained in a emotion that is going to help us to move forward and bring some things in our life back into action or just feeling like we need to be in action. So we're initiating something because it is in the sign of cancer and cancer is cardinal water. We are initiating a new emotion. There's a new emotion that is on the horizon with this full moon in cancer. Now, the full moon is going to be happening between your 12th house and then also uh, between your sixth house. And so what are these two houses? Well, the 12th house has a lot to do with God consciousness or the cosmos um, it has a lot to do with our our faith and our spirituality. That is where the sun, Pluto, and Venus is right now for you. So you've had a lot of concentration, especially over the last couple of weeks in this area of your chart. And that sun is going to be opposing the moon in the sixth house. So if you're new to astrology, the sun and the moon are in opposition. uh, When they're in an opposition to each other, it creates the full moon. So the moon is going to be in the sixth house at the time when the full moon is coming to a peak. Now, this full moon is going to be at 27 degrees. So what I think that you are going to quite jumpstart this week with is taking a look at a new faith that you have that then shapes your day-to-day rhythm. And when I say day-to-day rhythm, I'm talking about daily habitual patterns, you know, things that you are wanting to now incorporate in your day that have a lot to do with your faith and spirituality. And it has a lot to do with bringing the cosmic consciousness into your daily living. So a lot of you may have noticed that you are now feeling very different about your beliefs in regards to your faith and spirituality. Um, For example, if you have been not believing in tarot, now you might believe in tarot um, or vice versa. If you have had any kind of upbringing, especially, or you felt like you've known one uh, part of your spirituality for so long, you may have had a a change in this area. So with Pluto being here, there is new uh, truths that are surfacing that are not no longer relatable. And that's what I believe that a lot of you have been essentially taking a look at. And so what this full moon is doing, it is really jumpstarting a new approach to your life, but it comes with new spirituality or a new backing of spirituality because you are feeling and living differently now. And so it sort of brings you into a new beginning in a sense, even though it is a full moon. So there is an undoing of what the old version of you was and what faith looked like. And perhaps you didn't even have faith in certain areas. I don't know exactly how it is un- out, like playing out for a lot of you, but I feel that this is really huge because the 12th house 
has a lot to do with surrender. And it has a lot to do with the more we surrender, the more we're able to tap into a consciousness or a part of the divine, you know, this has a lot to do with the divine it has a lot to do with God consciousness, the oceanic consciousness. These are, you know, beyond the realm of our reality type of conversations we're having with ourselves. So I feel that this was a really big, big time up until this week, that kind of an epiphany or that kind of an energy is going to come through for a lot of you is, is that this has been a big time in your life and you're finally coming to some clarity in regards to what you need to be doing in your day-to-day -day now based on the shaping of new beliefs and new goals. Now, you might also be still engaged with undoing some of that faith or undoing some of the um, goals that you have or what the meaning of your life is going to be about, right? Um, I feel like a lot of you are going to feel quite passionate about that this week. And so you're jumpstarting a new routine um, essentially with this. And so now what is also very interesting this week is, is that the sun is going to be trining the North Node in Taurus. Now the nodes are switching this week. After 18 months of being in Gemini and in Aquarius, the nodes are now switching. And it's really, really interesting because the full moon initiates sort of a new passionate way in which we feel about our life. And then here are the nodal switches. And when the sun is going to be trining the north node in Taurus, this is going to give us the glimpse of where life is now going. Perhaps up until this now, up until this point, we haven't been able to quite see our way through things. Um, and it's not that we're going to have everything figured out this week. It, it's just really refreshing because there's a part of us that understands where we want to take our life next. And I think that this is going to be very welcomed. And so for you guys, this North Node switch is going to be from your, um, from your fifth house into the fourth house. So this is really interesting, right? Because the fourth house has a lot to do with our emotional comfort. And so a lot of you are going to be working over the next 18 months of really defining a new emotional comfort zone and what it means to have a family even, or what it means to be part of a family system. The fourth house has a lot to do with family. And then you're also going to realign what your career goals are as a result of it. And there is a new boundary shaping that's going to come with this. And the reason I say that is because the South Node is going to be in Scorpio. Scorpio deals with trust and boundary. And it also deals with power. And so the South Node being in Scorpio, I think we're going to realign the definition of power, and we're going to realign boundaries and trust. And so for you, this is going to be in the house of career. Now, the last thing that I do want to point out to you guys is that not only did you have the sun and Pluto in the 12th house, but we have seen for you guys that Venus has been now in the 12th house in the sign of Capricorn since November 5th. This has been a really long transit. <laughs> Let me tell you, I don't know about you guys, but I know for me, I have definitely felt this Venus uh, Capricorn transit. Now Venus entered Capricorn on the 5th. It started going through all of the degrees. It stopped at 26 degrees, which was December 19th. I don't know if you guys remember this time frame at all, but I, I definitely felt that energy. December 19th, it's stationed at 26 and it started going backwards through the degrees. And so since then, we have been really taking a look at the value of our relationships and the things we desire at a very close look. And so it is going to station direct on January 29th. And what does all of that mean for you guys, right? Venus in the 12th house can have you really take a look at your relationship and your goals and your desires in particular to what really makes you feel worthy, right? Where is, where is that sourcing from? With Venus in Capricorn, you're kind of taking a look at not only your faith and your spirituality, but you're taking a look at the quality at which this is sort of executed in your life. And you may have also come to a conclusion that there could have been people in your life that have given you sort of um, a, a pre sort of uh, meditated uh, belief or some kind of, you know, behavior that they had that really shaped what you believed up until this point, 
in regards to how you should manifest or where any of the sourcing of your spirituality comes from. And it could have been with uh, particular females in your life because Venus definitely has to do with um, the female energy. And so it could have been with certain females in your life. It could have been with, you know, uh, people that are, that were close to you. And so there's some karmic endings here, I think that are happening for a lot of you as well. When it comes to some relationships that used to be a part of your life that you're not going to you know, move forward with anymore, quite literally, it's done, and you are moving forward into a new direction. And so your goals are changing in regards to it, because your spirituality is different, and your faith might feel very different. And so when Venus stations to go direct at 11 degrees, you guys are going to actually have a lot more clarity on exactly why certain things maybe happened, or how your faith is now going to live out moving forward. It's really interesting. Like you guys, I really want to hear from you because this is a, a very interesting um, placement for Venus in the 12th house. I also feel that Venus in the 12th house can oftentimes deal with relationships that are more in the background or relationships that are more in the, um, in the realm of like some kind of spiritual relationship connection. So I'd be curious to know if you guys are experiencing any kind of new karmic beginning or ending in this area of your life. Um, definitely let me know. And now we're going to move on to your tarot. Reading. Here are your cards for the month of January, 2022. And the very first thing I want to point out is this is a very interesting turn of events as far as like the tarot reading goes because there's definitely more information that I'm picking up on and that is why I love doing the astrology and the tarot together. And what I want to say, the very most important message from this tarot reading is that you have to ask the question. You have to ask the question. A lot of you are dealing and grappling with a situation this month that has a lot to do with you wanting to move on. That is going to reset pretty much everything in your life. You are wondering about why someone did and behaved the way that they did. And no matter how many times inside of your mind you have gone through the situation, you will not know until you ask the question. Now, pretty much the entire month is going to deal with you understanding how to take a risk in regards to what it is that you need in your life in order to uh, pretty much just build stronger relationships moving forward. So a lot of you are dealing with that. And then the Queen of Pentacles here is a, um, a very interesting energy because you are in this place where you're ready to rebuild, but there's this one thing that is still on your mind. You feel that uh, things have been resetting in a way, but you had to sort of disconnect from a lot of the um, past sort of relationship dynamics in order for you to draw back to understand more about your part of it in it and then somebody else's part in it but it all boils down to one thing that you are wondering about and you are to ask the question now and this is really interesting now we're gonna unpack it a little bit more so the very first card is the three of pentacles right this is going to be the general theme of the month the three of pentacles well what do we know about the three of pentacles you are definitely in a place where you're taking on a whole new perspective towards your life. Now, there's two areas that you're taking this new perspective into. And that has a lot to do with who you, who you will be now moving forward when it comes to home and family, when it comes to your spirituality. And then a lot of it will also have uh, to do with finances. You have been sort of in this place where you've been looking at finances or looking at um, sort of self-worth or in regards to possessions, what has happened here? A lot of you, I feel, have had an incident or a situation with a relationship where people have sort of taken advantage of you or you. So a lot of you have felt like maybe you were in this situation where people have taken advantage of you or they were creating money for the wrong reasons or they were partnering up with you for the wrong reasons or supportive relationships where you felt like 
they were supportive up until the money situation came into the picture. So a lot of you have been reviewing and reflecting upon this. A lot of it has already unfolded. And so what you're doing now emotionally is you are sort of re-strengthening this area. You know exactly what has gone down in your point of view. You're done sort of re-evaluating it. You're in this place where you are disconnected from that now, but what you're trying to reconnect to is where you're going to take life next, right? So a lot of you are in this place where you're feeling a lot stronger. You're not questioning your strength anymore when it comes to making money or when it comes to moving forward with a better value system or boundaries in particular, right? This is going to be another thing that you're going to strengthen over the next 18 months. But then we see the 10 of cups. The Ten of Cups is a card that has a lot to do with you becoming a lot wiser, right? There is a lot of more wisdom that is coming through this month. And I feel that this has a lot to do with that Venus retrograde that you have been in. Again, you're taking a look at your belief systems, your spirituality, your faith. And there's a lot here in the background that you have been working on. And then you are basically in this place where you realize where your support really lies. Queen of Pentacles, the support that you are receiving at this time is something that you can count on. Now, what is really interesting and why I started the reading with, you know, you you are having to ask this question is because the next two cards are the Moon and the Knight of Swords. Now, the Moon card is in the challenge position. It is in the growth position. The Moon card basically says... There are some things that you still are wondering about that you haven't really quite wrapped your head around or you haven't really quite understood. And it is with one person that had a particular behavior and this person is maybe no longer a part of your life or there, there's something here that happened where I feel like there's been a disconnect between the both of you, but you're still wondering about why they behaved the way that they did. And so the Knight of Swords here is the next card that follows this. And it has to do with you taking the action, you asking and opening up the conversation. And what's going to be so interesting about that is this conversation is going to prove to you that it is time really to move on now. And what's so brilliant about that is you find closure. The Nine of Wands closes this aspect. The Nine of Wands is the last card here with the Five of Wands. Together they fell out. And what's so interesting is, is that you're really just um, letting go of fears in regards to what you thought maybe your, um, your joy was about or what you thought sort of like what your heart was in it for maybe you questioned yourself like was my heart in it for the right reasons you've done a lot of reflective work and you've done a lot of sort of questioning but this one thing that you're wondering about I truly like I know that not all of these general readings are true for every single person but for a lot of you Aquarius you have to hear this like unless you ask the question you're not going to be able to close this chapter out and that is what I think in a nutshell January 2022 is about right asking the question and then closing that chapter and just moving on with a sense of stamina again, right? Because that whatever they're going to share with you is going to be the perfect thing that you needed to know about because now you can move forward and you can actually put your energy into the things that you really want your energy go into. We see the power coming back online and that is what I'm seeing here for you for the month of January 2022. That's a wrap on today's episode. I hope that you liked this video. I hope that it provided you the guidance that you need in order to navigate through this month. Thank you so much for being here. I would love to stay connected to you, so be sure to subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram or TikTok at Uprise Astrology Podcast, and I will see you here in the next episode.